needs to win the three-point line. These teams are going to combine for 45 three-point attempts tonight. Evansville, 42% of their shots from the arc. Illinois State, 33% of theirs. We'll see who wins the three-point line. And Evansville needs secondary scoring. Juwan Newton, Shamar Gibbons, 47% of Evansville's points. They're going to need role players to play well tonight if they're going to steal a win on the road here in Redbird Arena. Purple Aces winning the opening tip. They're getting the first crack at offense. This is Evan Kuhlman. Gives it out to Gibbons. Two on the shot clock. Kuhlman has to jack it up, has it blocked by Kendall Lewis, and that'll be a shot clock violation. And there's Evansville using all 30 seconds of the shot clock, and they had to work very hard to get a bad shot. And that's a great example right there of what Evansville wants to do. They've really slowed the game down, and typically when you feel like not necessarily a less skilled team, but when you're a little outmatched in the league, you do things differently than other teams do. Evansville last in the country, and like you mentioned, Scott, used the entire shot clock there. Great start by the Redbird defense, and you saw what Evansville's trying to do. They're going to space the floor, put guys on the perimeter, and they're looking to get three-pointers. And so great defense there by Kendall Lewis and a good start by the Redbird defense. Illinois State making one change in the starting lineup coming into the game today as Cy Chapman lays it up and in on the feed from Josiah Strong. Howard Fleming starting here tonight with Mark Freeman coming off the bench. There's the starting five for Evansville. The Starting five, that was expected coming into the ball game today. This is Newton, the pull-up, comes up short, and the rebound grabbed by Fleming. And there you see probably why Dan Muller wanted to go with Howard Fleming over Mark Freeman. We talked when they played Bradley here last game at home. The length that Illinois State has on the defensive end of the floor can cause some problems, and uh, given not the greatest size. He draws the Kendall Lewis matchup. Fleming getting the start over Freeman. You saw the defense there on Newton to force the miss, the rebound, the push, and then Howard finishes on the other end. And that is probably a matchup thing that Dan Muller wants to exploit tonight, length on the perimeter. There's a turnover by Evansville. Kendall Lewis can't finish, but a late whistle and the right call made as Lewis did get hit on the arm. So Kendall Lewis will shoot a pair here for the Redbirds. Dan Muller in his 10th season as the Redbirds head coach looking on as we look at the foul on the arm there by Givens. And Kendall Lewis, an 81% free throw shooter. Illinois State really struggled on the road against Missouri State offensively, and right now a great start doing what is called turning defense into offense. And so Great job by Illinois State getting early stops, early rebounds, and able to push, and two easy ones so far. Chapman's dunk inside, and now Lewis with the transition layup. Defense into offense for Illinois State, as we mentioned, the Fleming matchup, getting stops, getting out and running, and Evansville struggles playing from behind, and so a really good start here from the Redbirds. Givens takes a three and makes it. 32% three-point shooter. Gets the Purple Aces on the board as they come in on a five-game losing streak. 0-5 in Valley play. Meanwhile, Illinois State coming off that loss Wednesday against Missouri State as Howard Fleming continues to play well. He had 10 points in 22 minutes against the Bears, and he had a career-high 11 points, part of the big comeback the Redbirds had on Sunday here against Bradley. And Howard Fleming has to feel like the confidence is growing. He was one of those who was out with COVID. He came back a little early and played Valpo and had seven turnovers and just didn't play very well. And since then, has really turned up his offensive game. And we're going to get a technical here on Shamar Givens. He must have said something to Kendall Lewis after the three-pointer fell, and that goes in as a personal foul also. And so now the best player on the Evansville Aces, as you see Todd Licklider exasperated, he knows how important Shamar Givens is to the Aces, and we are not even three minutes into the game. And Shamar Givens has picked up two fouls, one of which now is a technical there for taunting Kendall Lewis. Antonio Reeves at the free throw line, so Givens to the bench with two fouls and all six Evansville points. And Antonio Reeves will try to take advantage with a second technical free throw. But I was about to, before the technical foul, you know, obviously, three-point shooting is going to be key. Evansville, they jack up, what, 22, 23 three-pointers a game. Uh, they need those shots to fall. So far, so good, except the man that's made them is on the bench. Yeah, and the problem right now for Evansville is just that Shamar Givens is number one in the Valley in possessions used. He actually ends the possession for Evansville, either a shot or a pass, 33% of the time. And so not only is he important, and Scott, you mentioned the scoring, but just 
the flow of the offense, what Evansville wants to do, it's going to be very unusual here for them because the guy who typically makes it go is now out. And so we'll see. We mentioned keys to the game, secondary scoring. Shamar Gibbons is probably on the bench for an extended period of time. And right there, secondary scoring. Frederick King, who continues his perfect streak. He's four for his last four from three-point distance. Made all three of his attempts Tuesday against Loyola. Chapman, the up fake. Banks it in. Second bucket for Cy Chapman. Coming in, average over, averaging over 14 points a game. The second leading scorer for the Redbirds this season behind Antonio Reeves. Good to see Cy Chapman get going early. He had scored in double figures six games in a row until the last two. Bradley Missouri State only had four points against Missouri State. And obviously an important piece of what Dan Muller wants to do on the offensive end, so good to see him get started early. Coleman a three, spins out. Fleming the other way, lost it momentarily. Illinois State eight and two. Here at Doug Collins Court at Redbird Arena this season, eight of their nine wins. Five starters, and so this year's Evansville team is a little bit different, but certainly they're replicating the success they had of the seven. They've played some conference games. They lost to Southern by two, Drake by one. They're playing some competitive games, and so 0-5, oh certainly one right here is trying to find the confidence and getting that first conference win. Third turnover for Evansville. You saw Dan Muller, his record against Evansville as the Illinois head, head, head coaches. Illinois State head coach is 17-4. So he's had very good success against the Purple Aces. Fumbling that ball out of bounds was Ryan Schmidt, but it was last touched by Evansville. 11 on the shot clock. As Schmidt came in during the timeout. And also out there is Iman Washington for Illinois State. Reeves had it blocked. And then grabbing it away, Blake Sisley. Nice defensive play from the freshman from Santa Claus. You saw Newton right there go down to the floor and potentially a flop warning, but that is something that Evansville does on the defensive end, and they're one of those teams that, while they do sacrifice defense for offense sometimes, they are looking to take charges, and that's the first one we've seen a defender hit the floor, but you saw Reeves with a move and didn't really drop the shoulder, and Newton went right to the floor. No flop warning, no charge play on, but something to monitor as that is a key component of what Evansville does defensively. Newton has to force one up with a couple seconds on the shot clock. Schmidt able to grab the rebound. Freeman out there as well for the Redbirds. Reeves a three, and that's good. Five points here in the early going for Antonio Reeves. Wednesday was the only game so far this season that he did not reach double figures. He scored nine points in 29 minutes and only shot four of 13, a guy averaging over 20 a game. Really good find there by Mark Freeman, and you saw on the defensive end, Kendall Lewis, and Illinois State going to a switching man-to-man -man here last year. This kind of gave Evansville fits in the game that Illinois State won in Evansville. And so you see the mismatch, Freeman in the post, Schmidt getting the help. But Illinois State looking to switch up zone and switch up switching man-to-man. -man. And right there, Mark Freeman just not competitive enough as Blake Sisley draws the mismatch. And that's one of those things that Mark Freeman, we talked about Howard Fleming starting tonight. If Illinois State's going to switch matchups, Mark Freeman has to guard a post player. And there, credit to Evansville who found the mismatch. Kendall Lewis. Hits the three-pointer. Redbirds have only attempted two three-pointers thus far. And just saw them back-to-back -back possessions where they have gone in. Illinois State 18 to 11. Redbirds second in the Valley in scoring offense. 78.8 points per game. Falling behind Missouri State after the Bears beat them 88 to 63 on Wednesday. Newton over to Gage Bobe. Knocked away by Lewis, goes to the floor, and they call the foul on Bobe. Another great defensive effort there by Kendall Lewis, who has forced two misses on the ball, and there he's the help man in the middle of the lane and gets a hand on Bobe's dribble, and more substitutions for Illinois State. And we're still not in the clear because of COVID, and Illinois State has dealt with it in terms of postponements and pauses, and Dan Miller has talked about attempting to find a rhythm, and right now you see some interesting substitution patterns as you get McChesney and Amon Washington on the floor together. And so one of those things that this is a game that Illinois State is going to try to find some things that work. Nice move by McChesney going down the baseline. He averages uh, 1.7 points per game. Knocks down the first shot he takes in the first minute he plays.
Kluman skips it over to Bobe, takes a long two, comes up short. Freeman ahead for the Redbirds. Freeman coming off 19 points in 22 minutes on Wednesday, feeds it for Chapman. And by 10. Just one of those things that you have to keep playing. In Evansville, every game is going to be a learning opportunity for them. As we saw before the timeout, Todd Licklider upset about the ball screen coverage and certainly one that I'm sure Evans will watch the film and is going to get better from. One thing if you're Illinois State that you like very much so far this game, five assists on eight main baskets with only one turnover. And not one of the things that Illinois State typically does well. They're eighth in the conference in assists. And the man we talked about in the open has two early ones in Mark Freeman and here you see Reeves doesn't need the assist as that's just a very skilled play by Antonio Reeves who quietly at times in the broadcast. We've only mentioned his name here a few times, but early on, seven points already. Trying He's to get back into another streak of double figures after Missouri State snapped it. And you see with the all the three-pointers that Evansville takes, creates those long rebounds, creates those runouts, and Illinois State has seven fast break points. Absolutely, and that's something that Illinois State does not do well is defensive rebound. They tend to give up a lot more offensive rebounds than the league average, and so good sign for them right now as they force Evansville again to use the entire shot clock and take a long contested three-pointer. It's something Dan Muller has talked about is the competitive level of his defense is to contest every shot, and right now Evansville certainly hasn't had very many, especially late shot clock, that haven't been contested. Josiah Strong missed it, and Chapman was able to tip it up and in with his left hand. Eight points in the early going for Cy Chapman, and the Redbirds are on an 11-0 run right now. And the play that really swung this game wasn't even a play that was taking place, but more Shamar Givens' technical foul when he made his second three-pointer. It was 7-6 Illinois State at the 17-14 mark, and we see Shamar Givens here at the scores table, but he's now going to sit for seven minutes, and that lead balloon from 1 to 13 with Givens off the floor. And so we'll see when he comes back in if he's able to cut into it. But that technical foul that Shamar Givens picked up was kind of the play of the game here early, Scott. Yeah, he's ready to come back in the game with the next whistle as Newton did a nice drive. Weighing it up and in. First bucket for the senior from El Paso, Texas, who is second on the team in scoring and ninth in the Valley at 14.3 a game. Freeman, pass was behind Chapman, able to gather it. Knocked away by Gage Bobe and stole it. See if Evansville could settle it down now after knocking down a couple of buckets. Newton trying to get by the bigger McChesney and draws a foul on his way underneath the basket. First foul of the game on Illinois State. The last baseline drive by Juwan Newton, Dan Muller was not happy with Liam McChesney's effort. He's going to check out here, and I'm sure hear about it, as that's another baseline drive there by Newton. And that's one of the things that Illinois State, as we've talked about the mass substitutions and playing a lot of guys and finding a rhythm is, when you're a guy like Liam Machesney and you make one mistake, you might not see the floor again. And so some tentativeness there by Liam on the defensive end to give up the drives to Newton. And we'll see when he checks back into the game. But like you mentioned, Illinois State's first foul as Illinois State goes to zone here. Three-pointer taken and made by Antoine Smith Jr. from the corner. One of the things that Evansville does differently than a lot of teams is everyone on the floor is a three-point shooter. And so Antoine Smith more of your traditional post player in this lineup, but 44 of his 67 shot attempts this year are from the three-point line, and so there Ryan Schmidt just gets caught with a hand down, and really not a bad contest, but that's one of the things that Evansville does to create mismatches is you have to be ready to contest everyone on the floor at the three-point line as opposed to your traditional 4-5 lineup, more of back-to-the-basket post players. Iman Washington gets on the board with a dribble drive, and it's now a 10-point ball game again. Redbirds 28, Purple Aces 18. Smith looking for a second three. Inside position on the rebound, Schmidt, but he could not control it. And so it'll go out of bounds and be Evansville basketball with 20 on the shot clock. And we'll see Abdu Jai come on for the first time for Illinois State now. And that was one of those plays that Illinois State has to start making consistently. Evansville not crashing. Phillips, the only player going to get the offensive rebound against Ryan Schmidt. Illinois State has four white jerseys. The ball bounces off Ryan Schmidt's hand and Right now it's a 10 point lead and probably gonna be playing many more competitive games in the Valley. Those are just extra possessions right now that Illinois State can't afford to give up. They have to 
consistently rebound the ball and grab that right there, especially with Evansville sending only one to the glass. Tough shot. Evan Kuhlman, first bucket for the fifth-year senior. Averages six points a game, and Purple Aces have made four consecutive shots now to get back within eight after being down by as many as 15. Fleming working off to dribble, gets in the lane. Tried to hand it off to Lewis, got knocked back to him. Five to shoot. Lewis, and tracking it down, Fleming, fresh 20. And I'm just not sure on that possession. As Lewis, the spin and the finish as the defense there by Givens, and he had to be careful, obviously, already with the two fouls. Yep, and great job by Howard Fleming to get that offensive rebound, but the, just, just one of those possessions that's very empty for Illinois State. Howard Fleming isolated and dribbled the ball for about 12 seconds before he threw a contested pass to Kendall Lewis, and we talked about the, the clearing of the rebound. That's an offensive possession that Illinois State just can't give away. They need to move the ball. Too much individual dribbling there, but great job by Howard Fleming to secure the rebound, find the mismatch to Lewis. A fifth made three-pointer for Evansville here in the first half. Gage Bobe knocks it down, just his fourth made three-pointer of the season. And the Purple Aces within seven. Lewis tries to answer, and he does. Eighth time this season, Kendall Lewis has reached double figures, already up to 10 points here in the first half, and the lead back up to 10. This is Givens. Now to Preston Phillips for three, and Evansville is now six for 12 from downtown. We talked about winning the three-point line early on in keys to the game, and Evansville averages eight made threes a game and six for 12 early. Illinois State needs to do a better job contesting the three-point shots as Kendall Lewis kind of tries to pick his teammates up here from a defensive effort standpoint. Points going up at a high rate right now with 6.20 left. Givens guarded by Lewis, crosses over by him. Good pass, Kuhlman had it blocked by Lewis. Here's Reeves, floater, got it, and a foul. Now Antonio Reeves, after a tough day on Wednesday when he only scored nine, he's got a chance to reach double figures. We come back from a timeout. Illinois State 37, Evansville 26 with 6.01 left to go in the first half. Tonight's sponsored by Toyota. Visit your Peoria Peak and Bloomington Toyota dealer today. Sean, last time the Redbirds were here at home on Sunday, the second largest comeback in program history. They were down by as many as 20, down by 14 at the break, and came back for a rivalry win over Bradley. Trailing 35-15 early, and like you mentioned, 40-26 at the half, and it turned it over eight times and realistically that game was won on the defensive end. Illinois State switched up their coverage, really eliminated what Bradley was trying to do offensively and the man so far tonight on defense was huge in that game as well. Kendall Lewis has blocked two shots tonight. He was massive in the win against Bradley there on the defensive end, scored in double figures with 11, had two block shots. The competitiveness of Illinois State really showed in that one and showed again tonight as we've talked about. Evansville has shot well here in the first half. They're 10 of 19, that's 53%. But Illinois State is 15 of 20, which is 75% shooting in this first half. Redbirds being led by the 10 points of Kendall Lewis. Seven on the shot clock. Newton in the lane to Phillips, knocked to the floor. Fleming goes after it, has it, looking for help. Freeman skips it to Josiah Strong, one of the best three-point shooters in the country. Knocks down his first of the day. Give credit there to Mark Freeman. We talked about him in the open being that true point guard that Dan Muller has been looking for. And Illinois State, not necessarily the best team in terms of shooting the basketball and assists, but right now eight assists 
on 16 field goals, and Mark Freeman located Josiah Strong, and that's one of the things a point guard does really well is not just find guys, but know when guys need the ball like a quarterback. And right there he finds Josiah Strong again, but Josiah Strong hadn't had a basket yet, and so credit to Mark Freeman for recognizing that and finding Josiah Strong, try to get one of his better offensive players, and like you mentioned, Scott, one of the best shooters in the country going on the offensive end of the floor. Givens. Getting it back now. Slips down the defense by Fleming. Phillips with six to shoot. Smith has to shoot. No, he doesn't. Newton does. Put Newton in a very tough position. Able to get it up on the rim, but another long possession with nothing on the other end. And then Reeves in and out on the quick trigger three. Illinois State certainly pushing the pace there on the rebounds, and that's one of those three-pointers. Antonio Reeves, if he hits it, kind of a deflating possession there for Evansville. They use the entire shot clock only to end up with another contested three-pointer if Reeves had hit that. Preston Phillips pushes it up and in. First basket for the freshman from Elkhart, Indiana, who's been in the starting lineup now four consecutive games. And again, the switching man-to-man -man of Illinois State giving the defense problems. Mark Freeman recognized that he was switched onto a big there, and Preston Phillips was attempting a switch kind of in the middle of a possession and just got caught, and Howard Plumbing not afraid to hit the floor. Certainly does a lot of little things, kind of a glue guy this year, and one of those players who brings the energy as they beat Bradley their night. He was high-fiving the fans sitting courtside when Illinois State completed the comeback while play was still going on. <laughs> Coleman down low, forces one up, missed it, rebound Lewis. Lewis, Strong, Fleming, Chapman, and Freeman, the five for Illinois State. On the block, it's Chapman. Turns around and knocks it down over Preston Phillips. That is one of the things the Illinois State offense has been missing, and we talk about how well Josiah Strong has shot the ball, and we just saw the graphic about Reeves. Cy Chapman still a back-to-the-basket post presence there, and an easy mismatch, and that's something that Illinois State got away from a little bit. Dan Miller said the emphasis is on getting Cy Chapman more touches where he can make a post move, and there is athleticism really just causing problems for Evansville as a tough finish by Juwan Newton over the length of Cy Chapman. The floater high off the window went in. Chapman, by the way, now the second Redbird in double figures with 10. Strong to Fleming. Across the lane. And he uses the glass as well to knock it in. Right now, Illinois State is seeming to find a mismatch in a lot of places on the offensive end of the floor as Gage Bobe just certainly not quick enough or long enough to stop the Howard Fleming drive after we saw Chapman with the mismatch. And so good job by Illinois State slowing the offense down a little bit after Reeves missed the transition three to get two easy ones in the paint as opposed to settling for long jump shots. Shot clock at seven, Newton. Bumped by Fleming. Now Bobe with three, takes the three. Wild with it. Strong over to Fleming. Heading towards the final 90 seconds of the first half. Freeman with a burst in the lane. But a good defense played by Frederick. Now Kuhlman, the three. Front iron, rebound Fleming. Illinois State shooting 67% here in the first half. Evansville, upper 40s. Chapman comes up short. See if Evansville can get this in the into a single digits. Heading into halftime. Newton. Evansville really not even running an offense right now, just trying to burn some clock. And you get the sense they're content trying to just go into the half down 12 as opposed to holding and get away from them. As that did not hit the rim, I don't think. <laughs> it looks like the official that was nearest, Dan Muller, is saying it did. And Dan Muller has the hands up and almost a smile. Todd Licklider feeling like he got away with one. And Director of Basketball Operations, John Petersky, checking with the scores table about the shot clock. 
trying to stay on top of things for his head coach, and I'm not sure if we're going to get a video review or not, but Muller seems to almost be in disbelief, as I think you and I both were, Scott. I'm going to give the officials a little leeway here because Evansville is just lulling everybody to sleep. You are right. We talked in the timeout about what it, Evansville was trying to accomplish, and that it looked like they were trying to accomplish just the passing end. the ball around the perimeter. And they end up taking advantage of the extra opportunity. Frederick King with the quick two. 44-34. Big possession here for Illinois State's offense with 15 on the clock and no shot clock. We'll see what they're going to go with. And the four low set here as Reeves is going to isolate against Juwan Newton. And Dan Miller seems content to let his best player try to go make something happen here at the end of the clock. And Evansville trying to take a foul. And Freeman. no call. This is at the entering the day at two and three and nine and nine overall. As we begin this second half, Reeves, Strong, Chapman, Fleming, and Lewis, the original starting five for the Redbirds. Lewis for three. And the rebound caroms out to Shamar Givens, who's out there with Kuhlman, Frederick King, Newton, and also Preston Phillips. So the same starting five for Evansville as well. First half that Shaw, both teams shoot very well. Illinois State, 62%. Evansville, 48%. Only five fouls called in the first half. Shot clock down to two. Givens can't get it to go. And the rebound, Reeves. And Evansville, again, content to run the entire clock right there. The ball never got inside the three-point line until there was three seconds left on the shot clock. And so you wonder if that was talked about at halftime as they feel like they need to slow the game back down. And... That'll count for Antonio Reeves, a blocking foul. One thing Antonio Reeves has done extremely well, and we saw in the first half, there is an attempt to charge the body control. And right there, really good offensive players create the contact themselves and know in the game what is going to be called and what isn't. And there, Antonio Reeves does a great job creating contact, bouncing off of it, giving himself a chance to finish that. He wasn't out of control by any means. He took the contact, played off two feet, finished, and got the end one there. And A really skilled offensive play by Antonio Reeves. 12 points for Reeves. Illinois State lead back to 13, led by as many as 15. In the first half, Evansville's never led in this ballgame. Illinois State 7-1 and one this year when scoring first, 5-2 and two when they lead at the half. And you get the sense right now that this is one that Evansville's going to need to cut into. And they might not have the firepower to cut back if it gets to 17-18 here as we get a good look at a three-pointer and draws nothing but air. And Illinois State has the possibility here to start to put a little room between themselves and the Aces if they can get a few buckets in a row. Fleming enters it for Chapman. He knocks it down. Side Chapman with 12 points. And the lead back up to that highest number that it's been here tonight, 15. Great job by Illinois State coming out of the locker room for the second half with intensity. They've gotten good defensive possessions. They've held Evansville scoreless here and played well on the offensive end, but give up an open three here. And Antonio Reeves goes and gets the rebound, and they're off to the run. Chapman cannot reach that. Let's uh, revisit those keys to the game here, Sean, what you had and how things are panning out thus far. Well, we just saw Illinois State push the pace. The first key was pushing the pace and 29 shot attempts. In the first half, Evansville has certainly had some possessions where they've used the whole clock, but those that have have ended in misses, and Illinois State has gotten out and run, controlling the glass. 13-12 advantage, but only three offensive rebounds given up, and largely because both teams made a lot of shots. There wasn't a lot of rebounding to be had, but Evansville needing to win the three-point line, let Illinois State shoot 40% from three, only 35 of themselves, and secondary scoring was not an issue, but like you mentioned, Scott, largely because Shamar Gibbons spent the majority of the first half on the bench. And so every Evansville player who checked in, with the exception of Blaze Bochamp, who played 30 seconds, had a, ba had a basket. And so Evansville certainly getting the secondary scoring they wanted, but just not getting enough stops right now to keep this one close enough to be competitive. Shot clock at four. Give it off down low to Newton. Shawan Newton with six. First points of the second half for Evansville. Howard Fleming got caught standing there watching the ball as that's one of those things. Shamar Gibbons and Juwan Newton use 65% of Evansville's possessions. You tend to ball watch a little bit, and Howard Fleming caught there watching Newton drive, and Newton made a great pass. Fleming got caught up in the air there, last touched 
by Kuhlman, who actually he turned his back on Fleming and didn't get called for the foul. Fleming to the corner. Lewis, the up fake, steps into the two and gets a friendly Redbird Arena bounce. 12 now for Lewis, up above his average of 9.7 a game. 65th all-time meeting between these two programs. Mentioned they split a year ago. Both games were played at Evansville in the, the, uh, the altered COVID schedule of a year ago. Now these two teams playing back-to-back home-and-home today and Sunday which was not originally scheduled as this game today is a makeup from a postponement, but they'll play again Sunday. Freeman off the window and in. Excuse me, Reeves, 14 points for Antonio Reeves. Another play in the paint with contact. Newton checking the nose for blood. It looks like he did maybe get hit there. We talked about it. Evansville is a team that's not afraid to take charges, and we're going to get a, a stoppage here as Juwan Newton did take one in the nose. and. We've got some blood on the jersey as he's letting the official know he needs to get checked out. And this will take us into a break. We'll take the Southern Illinois a home victory as well over Indiana State. See a full slate of action tomorrow. And uh, Sunday as well, Illinois State will take on this Evansville team on the road. Blake Sisley misses the hook shot. Aim for the rebound, Ryan Schmidt. Illinois State has its largest lead of the day right now, up by 17, and a chance to make it 18 or 19 at the free throw line. Really good pass there by Mark Freeman, a name we've said a lot in terms of his passing tonight. He has not scored a basket, but has impacted the game in a variety of ways. Three assists would have been a fourth there had Schmidt not drawn the foul, and right now Evansville one for six from the floor in the second half and great contributions defensively across the board from Illinois State as we've seen Amon Washington there only played eight minutes but chested up Blake Sisley and forced the miss which allowed Illinois State to get out and run and one thing Illinois State has done tremendously well right now is they've gotten out on the break when they've gotten stops and even right there where they get a rebound in the half court offense are able to get out push the pace get a transition ball screen for Mark Freeman and Ryan Schmidt ends up at the free throw line. Splits the free throws. Redbirds have 14 fast break points in this game. Helped out by turnovers and long misses off of three point shots. Still gonna be Evansville basketball with 18 to shoot. Todd Licklider has 231 career wins as a head coach in his 15th overall season. Which in the years of Butler and the stint with Iowa. Went to the Division II level and coached at Marion in Indianapolis. And with Evansville as an assistant a couple of years ago and took over as the head coach halfway through the season. Give it, had it blocked. And then Washington able to snare it out of midair. Another tremendous defensive possession there from Amon Washington, who we've mentioned in and out of the lineup a little bit. One way he can certainly make an impact with his length. And Josiah Strong hits the pull up. Shamar Gibbons right now two for six from the floor after starting two for two with those threes and has not scored since the technical foul at the 17-14 mark of the first half. And I feel like maybe that just kind of took him out of his rhythm early and another Stop by the Birds as Amon Washington got his hand in another one. Race to the corner to save it in, and able to save it was Schmidt getting it too strong. Now Freeman. 20 point advantage, and chance to make it 22 or 23 with the second opportunity. Three pointer missed by Strong. Two good plays there by Mark Freeman, though. Dribbled through the paint and what looked like he was going to shoot a contested layup, pulled it out, and there passed up an open three for an even more open one for Josiah Strong. Didn't finish it, but some maturity right now from Mark Freeman from the point guard position. Jawan Newton getting the hoop in the harm. Fouled by Washington.
First free throw attempt of the day for Evansville. Redbirds shooting 61% tonight, which as of now would be their best field goal percentage outing of the season. 57%, the prior high this year. Evansville going to test out a little bit of a 2-3 zone here. And more of a matchup zone than your traditional zone defense. Three pointers today, four out of 12 so far on the evening. And Josiah Strong has knocked down one, as has Antonio Reeves, which is not a surprise. We'll, we'll show you a little graphic in a moment when we can. So that's, a, that's a tease, Sean. We'll come back to that here in a second. Shot clock at four for Givens. Against Reeves, forces a pass to Phillips, got knocked away and turned over. The Illinois State defense continues to impress here late in the shot clock, and Evansville is one of those teams, as Scott, you talked about right before oh, the half. Oh, Schmidt with the two-hand flush. Illinois State is exploiting that matchup right now. Mark Freeman, another outstanding pass, a left-hand bounce pass there. But as I was saying, Illinois State, we mentioned before the half, Evansville kind of lulling people to sleep, and that's one of those things that when you get down late in the shot clock with 7-6-5, you tend to relax a little bit. And Illinois State has done the opposite. They've been very good in late clock situations and right now kind of controlling the game in all aspects as Mark Freeman and Ryan Schmidt have connected three plays in a row on the offensive end of the floor. Mark Freeman now five assists, no turnovers in the game. In fact, Illinois State with just three turnovers and 11 assists on 25 made buckets. Givens looking for a bucket, can't get it. And the rebound by Washington. Ahead to Reeves with a fancy finish. It's starting to sound like a broken record, but really another great pass by Mark Freeman. And there you can see he plays with his head up, and he was at about the E in the Carl logo when he saw Antonio Reeves with his step and kind of led him to the basket there. And the sixth assist for Mark Freeman without a turnover as Illinois State is on a 13-2 run here to try to put the game out of reach here for Evansville. Evansville back in their matchup zone right now. Schmidt into the corner, McChesney. Five to shoot for Fleming. Maybe got away with a ward off there, gets his own rebound and finishes. That's Three up. consecutive games of double figures for Fleming now. We talked about Howard Fleming coming on coming into his own role here, and like you mentioned, Scott, double figures. Oh, McChesney <laughs> swatting Newton out of the air, and Evansville ends up turning it over. Fleming to Washington, and the Redbirds are soaring. Defense to offense, Liam McChesney meets Juwan Newton at the rim, and the run out dunk for Amon Washington as the lead stretches here closer to 30. And that should about do it for Evansville, you'd think. All the momentum and four block shots haven't really had the opportunity to offensive rebound tonight because they're shooting so well from the floor at 64% right now. 19 2 fast break point advantage for Illinois State today. 36 to 18 points in the paint. Outscoring Evansville 22 to 4 here in the second half. And another steal, Lewis from Washington, the land. Lewis now with 14. As the Redbirds have four players in double figures, led by Reeves is 16. Getting in the passing lane again is Washington. So I was mentioning that three-point number. Illinois State is one of two players, one of two teams in the country with two players that have made 50 or more made three-pointers. Strong and Reeds have uh, done that this season. Sean, the other school that's done that? 
Jacksonville State. The Gamecocks. A very good OVC program, Jacksonville State. Antoine Smith coming out of the corner. Three on the shot clock. Can't bank it in, gets his own rebound, swallowed up. Sisley for three, that's good for Blake Sisley, who has seven points off the bench. And Evansville needed to see one drop there as they started this game three of five from the three-point line and were three of 17 after that. And first one this half and certainly has gotten out of hand here and chipping away Blake Sisley. We've talked about secondary scoring. Good to see a role player for Evansville step up and knock down a shot as Schmitz. Another good look this time from Josiah Strong. Looked like Sisley hit a wet spot there and great recognition and Illinois State up to 14 assists now on 30 field goals and talking before the game assistant coach Marcus Belcher who has the scouting report said he'd like to see a 15-10 assist to turnover ratio for the Redbirds tonight well how's 14-3 it's going to be an interesting 9-24 to get to 15-10 from 14 assists and three turnovers right now We're going to see Malcolm Miller for the first time. Yeah, Miller into the game, the redshirt sophomore from Shelbyville, Illinois. Strong, another one to Schmidt. Getting his hand in there to knock it away was Kuhlman. Good opportunity tonight for someone like Ryan Schmidt to get extended minutes and he played 28 minutes in the Wisconsin game and not much since he's been in and out of the lineup he was out with COVID and certainly a good opportunity for him to get his win back and kind of a backup big man and right there the athleticism of Liam McChesney another dunk for the Redbirds here in the second half and the lead is 31 Remember, these two teams will play again on Sunday at Evansville. Newton misses the three, Miller the rebound. And with the quick turnaround for Sunday, you'd have to think we're Schmidt probably getting ahead close. of the pack. Nobody getting back defensively for Evansville. And the Redbirds are pouring it on. It has turned into a little bit of a dunk contest here for the Redbirds and multiple guys in on the action. And Another air ball from Evansville, and you'd have to think, like I was saying with the quick turnaround, Evansville, not a deep bench. There's only 10 guys in uniform tonight, and so probably going to have to play some guys some extended minutes. You'd have to think potentially Newton and Givens are going to get a break as they're a big part of what Evansville is trying to accomplish with the quick turnaround. And You have to feel really good for someone in today's game like Amon Washington, who was a, a key contributor last year, a starter for the Redbird team, and somewhat trying to find a role here on this new lineup. And Amon Washington right there contesting our shot. He's got four points. He's two of two, three rebounds, and two assists, a block, and a steal. And so some extended minutes here for Amon Washington is certainly making the most of them. Schmidt went to the bench, by the way, with nine points, tying his career high. Freeman out to Washington. Freeman, who hasn't scored today, hasn't needed to. He wanted to get his Sundays with the full weekend of action. It is, and we saw in the, the previous graphic, home team has went 3-1, and one, as it seems right here, Illinois State going to hold serve at home. And so a big one Sunday for Illinois State as they look to get out of that Thursday streak playing in St. Louis. Winning road games is certainly one way to do that. And so you've seen them really dominate Evansville for the majority of this game. And so a big one Sunday, if they can steal one on the road, get to above 500 in the Valley. That was your Toyota out of town scoreboard. Be sure to visit Toyota.com. Two on the shot clock, Newton. Shot clock violation will be only the 11th Evansville turnover. And I, I stress only because there's just been so many other possessions that have gone to two or one on the shot clock and they've had to force up a shot, which doesn't go as a turnover in the book, but it might as well be. Correct, and the thing I'm surprised by, Evansville now 3 for 16 in the second half with a shot clock violation, and they don't necessarily seem to be changing anything up. And, Scott, you mentioned it. We've seen a lot of full shot clock possessions where the ball never gets inside the three-point line. There's not a lot of 
movement. There's not a lot of swinging the ball. They don't get one side to the other. And Three-pointer Mark Freeman. He gets on the board for the first time today to go along with his six assists. Certainly not taking anything away from the Illinois State defense because they've responded to a blowout loss in tremendous fashion. But Evansville just making themselves very easy to guard tonight, it feels like. Benbird shooting 67%. Their previous high this season, 56.8, let's say 57% back in that game against Chicago State on December the 11th. And the bench continues to empty for Illinois State. Aruna Sissoko is into the game. Certainly a game if you're Illinois State, you're pleased with. And we talked about the quick turnaround. Evans only dressing 10 players. Illinois State looks like they're going to get their guys some extended rest as Kendall Lewis and Cy Chapman have warm-ups on. Sissoko with the one-hand slam. He enters into the game, and moments later, he joins the fun. And I mentioned earlier it was turning into a little bit of a dunk contest for Illinois State, and I think the majority of the guys on the bench would admit they don't want Corona Sissoko seeing the floor if there is a contest because he about dunked that one with his elbow as Sissoko gets loose. Just mentioning Kendall Lewis with a warm up on, Cy Chapman with a warm up, and the starters are done for the night. And so Illinois State, tremendous response to a blowout against Missouri State and get a little bit of an extended break before they go back Sunday and play this same Evansville team. Blaze Boatchamp able to get on the board for the first time today. Malcolm Miller can't get it to go. Rebound by Sisley. So these two teams again Sunday, 1 o'clock Central Time start at Evansville. Got a foul here on Illinois State. Well, the Redbirds will hope to get their first victory on the road in Valley play on Sunday. Alston Andrews will come on at the next whistle as well for the Redbirds as Jawan Newton makes the first of two free throws. And also coming in is Jaden Johnson. There you had some extended time here, five minutes and 15 seconds. If you're Coach Dan Muller, you love that scenario with a game, well, Less than 48 hours from now. The free throws there by Juwan Newton. Evansville's 10th and 11th points of the half, and so it took nearly 15 minutes for Evansville to reach double digits here in the second half and have really struggled offensively this year. They rank last in the Valley and certainly demonstrated why tonight as they've struggled offensively as Austin Andrews just bullies Preston Phillips inside for the easy layup. Austin Andrews who's only played now in eight games this season. Sophomore from Detroit. 81 points on the board for Illinois State. Their season high 105. Now of course that came in a uh, double overtime game. Gage Bobe misses. which was a single overtime game, a victory here against Bucknell. And this one will head to the back court and be it over and back. Nope, now the officials deem that it was actually deflected, so they'll let the Redbirds keep the basketball with eight on the shot clock, so that, for the time being, avoids a fifth Illinois State turnover. And only eight left on the shot clock here, and your primary playmakers, if you're Dan Muller, are out of the game, and so we'll see what comes of a late shot clock possession here for Illinois State without a true point guard on the floor. Miller will get a shot off, and the whistle blows. Foul on Evansville. And the first one, Evansville able to draw probably the sixth or seventh attempt oh, there. Oh, offensive foul, excuse me. I thought they called a blocking foul. Evansville, we've talked about it, looking to take charges in there. Malcolm Miller just gets ahead of steam, rejected the ball screen, went right hand to drive, and 
connected with the chest of the Evansville defender and the first charge drawn by the Aces tonight here as we are now under four minutes to play. There's Ian and Aruna. Draws the foul today for a matchup with Northern Iowa. And if you look a little further out for ISU, you're getting Drake, Northern Iowa, Loyola, and SIU. And so Evansville twice certainly becomes very important on Sunday. Assuming this one wraps up with a win, you have the opportunity here to get to four and three in the Valley before ver four very tough games. But anything can happen, as we saw Bradley just take down Drake in Des Moines after losing here in Redwood Arena, blowing a 20-point lead. 81 to 47, three and a half minutes left. McChesney with a left hand finish. Liam you see there the skill level that Liam McChesney can offer, and you see why the Illinois State coaches are so excited about his potential. We saw earlier the block against Juwan Newton at the rim, and certainly hasn't shot it well from three this year, but right there, a right handed player going left hand hook shot on the block, certainly. A very highly skilled offensive move from Leah McChesney. Second basket for Blaze Beauchamp. Sophomore junior college transfer from Minnetonka, Minnesota. As a timeout for a substitution made here. Nick Stottleman checking in. It's a lineup right now of Stottleman, Miller, Johnson, Sissoko, and I'm missing one, Andrews. That's a three-pointer for Jaden Johnson. When you ask the Illinois State coaches who works the hardest in this program, one name that comes up often is Jaden Johnson, and they say he's in here morning, noon, and night getting shots up, and so you have to feel good for someone like that. Jaden Johnson in here working on his jump shot, staying ready, and there gets the opportunity to knock down the three-pointer. The Redbirds are threatening to shoot 70% in this game. They are at 69%. 68 and a half to be exact, and it's going to get better after another three-pointer by Jaden Johnson. Jaden Johnson, cool as a cucumber after the second one. He's pointing out defensive coverages. He's not celebrating, and certainly looks like someone who expects to make jump shots. Good finish by Anaruna. 89-54. Illinois State, 69.1% field goal shooting. Let's get Seven another. 15 from three. Make it Let's get another. As Jaden Johnson, three consecutive three pointers. It is loud. It is excited. And Evans Hill turns it over. As with 1.12 on the clock, it looks like Illinois State's going to have the possibility to run another set and a lot of smiles in the Illinois State players. Letting Dan Muller know they'd like to run another set for number 24, Jaden Johnson. Stottleman in control of the basketball. Backdoor cuts is Soko off the window and in. Showtime, high-flying Redbirds here today, 94 to 54. Miller looking for a steal. Illinois State, by the way, officially at 70% shooting, 70.2 for the game right now, 40 of 57. And I would have to say that if you gave the odds before the game of Jaden Johnson outscoring Shamar Givens, who's seventh in the Valley in scoring. I would have told you 
to go to Las Vegas if you knew that was going to happen. Is <laughs> certainly a lot to be excited about if you're Illinois State. They said after the Missouri State blowout, this is not who we are. We've been competitive all year. It's a blip in the radar. It's not going to dictate the rest of the season. And tremendous response from the Redbirds here as they're going to wrap up a near 40-point victory. So they will end up shooting seven.